Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to take a look at the n equals 4 uh, what we call interference pattern system. Now here we have four slits adjacent. The distance between the slits is still the same and depending upon how much extra distance each phase has to travel relative to the one right next to it we're going to end up in an interference pattern that now looks like this. Notice that the maxima are now becoming narrower but they're also becoming taller. In other words the intensity of each one at the very peak is higher than it was before. The intensity is proportional to the total uh, what we call total amplitude of the electric field oscillation squared since when they're all lined up so when they're all in phase they simply add up like vectors the total electromagnetic field oscillation is equal to four times the electric field oscillation for a single one and therefore the intensity is this quantity squared or at least proportional to that quantity squared so the intensity is 16 times the intensity of a single phase a single slit uh, the energy coming through a single slit now notice that there are two small maxima before we get to the next large maxima. Notice that the maxima always occur at the same location provided that the distance between the slits is the same and of course that we use the same wavelength for the light. But notice now we have two small maxima. We call those subsidiary maxima. They're much smaller intensity and the reason is that a very small portion of the phaser survives when they all arrive at a particular location. Let me show you how that works. So here we have a situation where they all line up so they all add up. The total is equal to four times the electric field oscillation of a single one but here if the phase difference is 90 degrees notice that the phases then come around and the total add up to zero so we would find a minimum in this particular case and then here if the phase angle between them is 120 degrees notice that here's the first phaser the second phaser the third phaser so the first three phasers cancel each other out but the fourth phaser survives and therefore the total equals the the value of a single phaser E total equals E sub naught and when you square that you get the value equal to 1. So the height of the subsidiary maxima would equal 1 times the intensity of a single phaser. Now we can figure out where to draw these subsidiary phasers and where to draw the minima by again using this principle. The minimum can be found when you take 360 degrees divided by the number of, of slits. In this case 360 divided by 4 is 90. So we find a minimum at 90, 180 and 270. So notice at 90, 180 and 270 we find a minimum and then add it to 360, 360 plus 90, 360 plus 180, 360 plus 270 and we find another minimum right there. The maximum as well as the subsidiary maxima can be found by taking 360 divided by the number of slits minus 1. In this case it's 360 divided by 3 which is at 120 and a 240 and a 360. So we find a maximum, a subsidiary maxima at 120, at 240 and then a full maximum at 360 and again 360 plus 120 which is 480 uh, that would be 600 and at 720 and so forth. That's where we find the maxima. Uh, let's see here. Again, if we want to find the intensity using this equation right there, which is the equation that came from right there, again, 4 times 120 degrees, 480 divided by 2, that's the sine of 240 divided by the sine of 60. Take that quantity squared and then you end up with 1 times the intensity of a single phaser. And that's how you find the interference patterns and you just keep going with that system. You have five slits, six slits, seven slits. You follow the exact same technique and you can then draw out what the interference pattern will look like. And that's how we do that.